This is a counterfeit CPU. It says Intel i9-12900KS, but it's actually a G6900 $40 CPU. One of these is legitimate. And unfortunately for our viewer, uh, he purchased this CPU, which is a, again, G6900. He paid $500 for it. And there's not really much of a way, if you don't know, to tell if it's real until you plug it in. Now, we've found a few key identifying differences, and just one of them that we'll give you a preview of here is the backside. You can see the SMD population and density is much higher on the real CPU. This is a real 12900KS. This is the G6900. If we put this next to a G6900, it would look identical. But that's just one of the methods to detect a fake. We're going to show a lot more in this video where there is a counterfeit problem in the secondhand market. It's not terribly widespread, but it wouldn't take too much effort for it to become widespread. So our plan is to give you the tools to learn what a counterfeit secondhand product might look like, video card or CPU. And as for our viewer, fortunately for him, um, we bought it. So he paid $500 plus for the G6900. He filed a police report. It was an in-person exchange. Nothing came of the police report. We said, okay, we'll give you the 500 bucks. We get a cool video. He gets unscammed, I guess. But for the rest of you, pay attention because we're going to show how it works. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and their new Series 500TG ARGB mid-tower case. The Thermaltake series case is perforated all on the front panel and the power supply shroud, including perforations on the cable side of the case for further ventilation to the PSU and hard drive chamber of the case. A separate access door for hard drives makes the case easy to work with for 3.5 inch storage, or the door can be swapped out for a separate LCD panel kit that displays system information. Other features include a GPU support kit, vertical mounting, and a hinged glass panel. Learn more at the link in the description below. So before we get back to these CPUs, I wanted to bring the topic back around to GPUs because we've covered scams like this in the past. So we're going to go to storage. So video cards are much easier to do one of these scams on. And it's because you can just flash B BIOS. So we have somewhere in here an NVIDIA card and also an AMD card where this was actually one of them, I think, yeah where what they did for video cards, especially back in the day when there were fewer authentication checks, is uh, they would flat the scammers would flash a VBIOS on it that reads an incorrect name. So it's a firmware trick where basically what they're doing is instead of, uh, say, selling you the GTX 1080 that they actually listed or the RX 580 or whatever it is, you rewrite the VBIOS product name, but nothing else. So let's take a quick example. Let's say the scammer claims they are selling a GTX 1080. What they're actually selling is maybe a 1060. The way you do this scam is the 1060, the core still says whatever the GTX 1060's product SKU is for the GPU core, but unless you take the cooler off, you're probably not going to see that. That one is etched into the die, though, unlike the Intel IHSs we just looked like where you can wipe it off. So for that scam, they write the fake product name into the VBIOS for, in this instance, the 1080. So the 1060 gets a real 1060 VBIOS or firmware. It operates and behaves exactly like a 1060, but in GPU-Z or in Hardware Info or something, it says GTX 1080. They might go as far as faking the product SKU for the GPU die name as well. But that's how video card scams work, where it's entirely software. The CPU one, that we're going to go back to, that's all hardware. So let's go back to the CPU. Now, in the case of the video card, it's a little harder to tell from a digital page if it's fake. The CPU, there are some clear signs, though. So if you can get the seller to actually post real photos of it, I don't know how many sellers would be willing to deal with you asking them to write basically a watermark into the photo. But if you can get a real photo of the product they are selling, you can zoom in and check for some of these. But first, we're going to start with the practical demo. Let me check which one's fake, and socket this thing to show you what, obviously, what will come up when we run it. Because once you install it, it's pretty obvious it's a fake. The trick is not getting so far as being in possession of it, because then they're probably long gone, like the guy our viewer bought from. It's a 
It's not a it's not product placement. It's just actually every bench in our GPU and CPU testing area, all of them use Arctic coolers, which is why we sold them the ad. Okay, let's do a quick boot. How do you like my power button here? That's the uh, high-end solution. How do you turn it on if the board doesn't have its own power button? <laughs> you, you short the pins and you stick a button onto the end of it, and there's your power button. Okay, so we have something that says it's a 12900KS plugged in. Let's start with uh, let's start with hardware info. I think we have that on here. So how about that instantly, right? immediately identified the fraud that it is. So it's pretty easy. But once again, the problem is we had to be in possession of it. So if you're not buyer protected some through some online system, you're just screwed. That's it. Like the guy's gone. So and the police probably don't really care according to uh, to what happened to our viewer because unless you have some serious evidence, I mean, good luck. Um, there's other stuff though. So this obviously validates it in software. We also have a tool from Intel that does a legitimacy check. So this is an Intel official tool. It's available online. You can download it for free. And apparently this was enough of a problem where Intel put software out to help verify whether the CPU is legit. And in this instance, what it's doing is running a quick test and over here on this screen, it's eventually going to spit out some information, which I've just manipulated the test a little bit, but it's eventually going to spit out some information to give us an answer. So let's let that finish. Okay, so, so far it passed as genuine Intel, which is funny. Uh, brand strain, cache, all this stuff is passing, but I think it's going to end up telling us some additional information. All this genuine Intel means is that it is in fact an Intel part, which it is. This tool won't, won't know that it's the lid that says 12900KS. It just knows what the silicon is telling it. Okay, so it says pass. Now that's because all this is doing is making sure it's an Intel CPU and it works. But over here, you can see it's once again telling us the name of the product. It's identified it's two cores, two threads. It gives us the IGP. This is clearly not uh, a 12900KS. And just for one last thing, we're going to run Cinebench and then we'll swap CPUs. And we're going to do multi-core because I don't want to be here for like an hour. This is actually going to take a really long time. Okay, we're going to stop this test. This is pointless. There's two <laughs> there's two tiles rendering. You can All right. So, it's a G6900. I don't know why I thought that would go faster. It's been a long time since I've like unironically ran a two-core CPU through Cinebench. So, uh, let's just let's show the physical differences now. Let me shut this down. So, the scammer, it's it's an interesting one. They go out, they buy a genuine CPU. So, they have money in it. <laughs> Then they put time in it, and we'll show you how that works. Wow, who applied this thermal paste? It's perfect. Actually, I'll demonstrate it right now. This is how the scam works right here, this exact thing I'm about to do. So you could do it maybe in a faster way, but the slow and uh, traditional way to get rid of the text on an Intel CPU is to clean it, just like this. And to show you sort of a before and after, let me defer to our 7700K. This CPU was in and out of test benches for probably five years for us. And you can barely see the text at this point. So the text should look something more like one of these, but instead it's basically gone. You can also see that the nickel plating on the IHS is shinier, and that's because it's effectively been polished and buffed several times as the person doing, in the case of the G6900, it would be the scam. As they wear down the text, it will make the rest of it shiny. In this case, it was from actual use. It's just from cleaning thermal paste off. That's how easy it is. So if the seller is willing to let you install and test the CPU in front of them, you have plenty of options. Obviously, the CPU name's different, the core count's different, the cache is different, IGP is different. 
This makes it clear that it's fraudulent. But physically, there are a couple red flags. They start with the IHS markings. These look genuine. The top edge of the substrate is the giveaway, though. We counted a total of 60 tiny contact pads split into groups. On a real 12900KS, there are actually 66 pads on the substrate top, and they're laid out differently. So knowing this, you could compare the photo on eBay, assuming they took a photo of the one they have, to a photo of a real 12900KS, or whatever CPU it is you're buying. Then you would count the pads, which we'll mark individually, and compare that they're in the same places, because these will never change. That's an Intel thing. It's tempting to call out the swirl trademark as different from the double square trademark that you see, but that in itself isn't enough. Intel switched from the swirl to the double square in quarter one of 2022. So early samples of the 12900KS or earlier CPUs will have that swirl and the newer ones won't. The last note on the top side is just again that the IHS is shinier because they're probably buffing it down. Now moving to the underside of the CPUs, you can see the service mount devices or the SMD layout is different between the two, just like the pads on the top. Now looking at these differences won't tell you what the CPU is, unless you're extremely studied in CPUs and Intel only made one SKU that has that layout, that amount of pads in those places. So. All it actually does is confirm for you if it's what you think it is or what you think you're buying. And we would recommend just pulling up images online, front and back of the CPU, to compare against whatever it is you're being sold. If you're buying secondhand, first party retailer, new in box, you don't need to worry about this. Don't waste your time. If, it's, if there's something wrong with it, try and return it instead. Now let's talk about the more advanced methods of identification. There's two of them, and they're both on the how do I check if the Intel processor is authentic page that Intel made on Intel.com. Intel has this image on its partial serial number for Intel desktop box processors support page. Intel's image is lacking in the pixels department and has slight differences compared to the 12th gen. So we've taken the liberty of remaking it. Starting with the markings on the IHS, the first thing is the trademark, which again will either be the swirl or the double square, depending on when it was made. The next two lines are the processor name followed by the spec code which is a string of letters shared by all processors of the same SKU. For example, the 12900KS is SRLDD. Next is the finished process order, or the FPO, which is also known as the batch number. On CPUs with the double square trademark, there's also a 2D matrix code. That 2D matrix contains the full assembly test process order, or ATPO, which is also known as the serial number. This matrix is only readable via a scanner or a smartphone app, and Intel has instructions for reading it on its page called Read Serial Number for Intel Box Processors Using Third-Party Applications. They're definitely nothing if not literal. The matrix is present on the substrate of all current Intel CPUs, and for those that have it on the IHS as well, they should match when scanned. And then finally, there's a partial serial number, the ATPO, that's actually etched into the substrate. So this one is immune to the buffing of the IHS. That number right there, very unlikely a scammer would change that or would be able to do so without anyone noticing. And that number is useful if we plug it into Intel's warranty tool. So what's important here is that only partial serial numbers are associated with each batch number. And Intel actually has a database of all these for tracking and for warranty purposes. So you can expose the fake that way. So starting with the real 12900KS as a baseline, after entering the batch number and the serial number, the tool returns the warranty information and full serial without any complaint. When we give it the information from the fake CPU, it complains about the serial number saying, quote, the ATPO number entered is invalid enter visible characters or full ATPO for an accurate warranty date. As for what this means, this is proof that the serial number and the batch numbers don't match in Intel's own database. So that one's kind of nice because if there's a real photo of the product you're buying online, you can take that information, plug it into Intel's warranty tool, and have a really quick check that doesn't require you to ask the seller for all this extra information or for you to have it in your possession. Now for the last part of this, we reached out to Intel to ask them about how this scam is done. And feasibly, you could do this on AMD as well, but Intel's processor is really easy to get the text gone, and then you would re-laser it. And AMD, it might take a little more work just from our experience working with it. So until Intel changes their etching process in a way that makes it more counterfeit proof, which, I mean, it, I don't know. I don't know that I would build my product to 
that kind of standard if I were Intel because this is what they do for millions of CPUs a year. So unless it's a widespread problem, why would you change it? But hopefully they have something better in the future. Either way, for now, Intel is the main focus, not AMD. We haven't seen a fake AMD CPU. If you know of one, let us know in the comments so we can buy it and we can look into ways you can identify those just like we're doing here. But Intel gave us a comment. They said, quote, we cannot account for all methods and implementations used to create counterfeit products. However, it can be that authentic markings are removed and replaced with alternative visual markings misrepresenting the actual product. Intel recommends that customers purchase Intel products from authorized distributors and suppliers. So it's easy to see the motive here from all sides. From the buyer's perspective, you're getting hopefully a really good deal on a CPU secondhand. Or if it's a brand new CPU, maybe you're just getting something that's otherwise out of stock in first party retailers. So that's the benefit there. For the scammer, it's money. It's that simple. Because if you buy a $40 CPU, you spend some time with probably a more advanced method than ours here, that's much quicker, like some kind of buffing or polishing tool, and you clean it off, and then you have access to something, I don't know if it's exactly laser etching, you can correct me in the comments, but if you have basically some kind of lasering machine to put the new text on it, you match the font more or less, I mean, there's profit to be made there. Sell it for 500 bucks, if it was 40, and congratulations, you're an asshole but you also made money, so that's why they do it. Now, for protecting consumers, you don't have too many options. Where you buy matters a lot, obviously. So this particular viewer bought in person, and unless you know the first and last name, the address, they live in the uh, municipality where your police would be able to help you, uh, or it's a significant amount stolen or defrauded, then you don't have much recourse there. But obviously, if you're buying through something like eBay, you look for where you're buyer protected so that you can file a dispute and hopefully just get your money back if, if you're buyer protected. Uh, and it also depends on their seller ranking. If they're selling it through a particularly high ranking account, then perhaps they have more sway to get it decided in their favor. So it's also less likely that it's a scam though. So those are your main options. Uh, Intel's basically softly discouraging, of course, buying secondhand. There's a lot of reasons they would do that. I don't think that it's related to, hey, we can sell more first party if we discourage secondhand. I think it's because they don't have a good solution otherwise. So um, we think it's fine to buy secondhand, just those are the things to look for. Now you know, hopefully you can buy safer and with more confidence for secondhand. And as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab a shirt like this one if you want to help fund our next intentional effort of scamming ourselves so we can show you how it works. And we'll see you all next time.